Hi and welcome to the next video of the Nest.js and Angular project. This time we are dealing with pagination and here we will basically create an endpoint to paginate users and we'll do some minor refactorings. So why are we doing this? Because we don't want, um, if you get an endpoint and you want to have all users, you don't want to display, for example, if there are in the database 10,000 users, a table with 10,000 entries. Um, no one will scroll to the bottom, it's not practicable, or you can't even render it in the browser. So you want an endpoint where you get, for example, uh, 10 users on the first page, and then you can say with query parameters, you want to have the second page and another 10 users, so you can just paginate between the pages, like you will do on the in the UI in Angular later. Yeah, so this is what we are doing, and we will refactor some minor or do some minor changes in the code so that the user cannot change his own role or if a new user is created he will always have the user role and he can only get the admin role if um, an existing admin is giving him this role through our special endpoint which is protected by JWT and role protection. So the structure for video 5 is the same as for the last video so we will have a look at the video outcome then write a user story for this and implement it at the end and close this. So let's have a quick look at the video outcome, what we are building in this video. So here you can see we hit our endpoint like before, and now we are getting returned just um, not the array of users, but an object that's pageable. And so we have here our items, so all our users like before without the password. And then we have metadata where it says how many items are in the database, how many items are on the page max, how many pages are there and what is the current page. And we can easily use these links here to navigate between the pages and just hit send. And we could, for example, limit this to two and go to page two. So we are using the query parameters. Let's start with a quick overview of our story that we implement. So we basically want to have pagination for getting all users on an endpoint and fix some issues. So we want to be able to display all users and we want pagination for it, so we can turn the, to the next page and the users are displayed in a nice way, not just 10,000 on one page or one side. So, and we should fix some minor bugs. So we want all users to be pageable and we want to have query parameters. So for example, uh, how many should be on one page and which page do we want to have. Then the user should not be able to update his own role and the endpoint create should always create a user with the role user, as we said in the last video. So we can just start with this. So at the moment we are on develop. And so we want to switch to our new branch um, feature video five. So we can use git flow. And we say git flow feature start and we say the name, so video five. And then we will create a new branch based on develop. And we are now on feature five, you see it here. So what we want to do now is we have um, a paginating endpoint for getting all users. And why do we need this? Um, because if you don't want to have like there are 1,000 or 10,000 or more users in the database, uh, you don't want them to display it on one page. That's actually not really possible because even some browsers don't render more than, for example, 1,000 or 10,000 sets in a table. So we don't want this. So we want more than we get to like 10 users on page one, and then we paginate to the second page and get another 10 users. So what we will do is we will implement paginating and for this we can use an SJS paginate package. This is a custom one and so we will just install this. And then we can go into our documentation here <clears throat> and you can see we are having an endpoint, uh, the service here. So we can call this also paginate and we will just copy this or we will use this because my imports are, I don't know why, but they are not really fixed. So we use these three and then we can just look here. We have our find all method and now we are returning just all users that are in the database. Um, but what we want to do is we want to have a paginating endpoint um, where we will return an observable. And this should be from type pagination and there we have our type user what we are returning and in the paginate we can look here we have the options from pagination options 
passed in. Option. Options. So let me copy this. And if we go into it, we can see what we get here. We get a limit and we get a page and a route if we specify it. So the limit is where that you can say you want to have 10 or 20 or 30 users on a page or 100, whatever you want. And then the page is obviously the page that is requested. So then we want to return. And here we call our paginate endpoint or our paginate method from the package. And this is also of type user. And here we can give into it our user repository and the options. Then we can pipe it. And this we have to do um, because you can see like before, we have to delete our password from it. So we get a user's pageable. And this is from type pagination user. And so we can just use the same as before. So now it's the user's pageable. And then there you can see we have item links and metadata. And we go for every item and uh, loop over it for each. And then we delete the password. And then we can return our user's pageable. And we don't have the password. So now we have to look what it's saying here. Yeah, so we have to go with from because uh, it's a promise and we are returning an observable and we can only pipe um, this observable. So this should work now. And now we need our endpoint. And for this, we have our find all endpoint here. And we will uh, change this uh, to index. So we will go with the naming that um, they used here. Let me look here in this controller, they go with um, index, so we can do this too. And then we can also return an observable from pagination and from users, uh, from user. So we can import this and now we want to go against our user service, paginate. So and now we have to give this them some options and these we have to get like here. We have uh, a query or we have two query parameters that we are um, fetching and the first one is page and so we can just import this. close the window um, <clears throat> and now you can see we have our query parameter page that we are getting which is from type number and if nothing is specified so if it's not able to get a query parameter then it will take one as basic as parameter so we always have one and the second one we are having um, limit like like I said like here uh, no not like here but like in the pagination options here, like I said, the page, the number of the page and the limit, how many items are on a page that you request. So we can give these options to here, page and limit. And this is a short term, so we could also write limit, limit, but since it's the same name, we can go with, with this. And another thing that we said here is our limit. So this means, or this is looking for, if our limit is bigger than 100, then um, we use 100. And if it's smaller, then we use just the limit that's specified. So here 10, if nothing is specified, or if another number is there, then we use this. Or if it's bigger than 100, then we just um, use 100. So because you usually don't want to have so many items on one page. And another thing that we can do here is we can also specify the route option. 
and for this we don't want to go with this but we go with uh, local local host 3000 and then we go against uh, users and then we can see that there is um, we have uh, let me look here our pagination links and they are the basic thing is uh, filled at the front you can see it later with localhost 3000 so later we can switch this to our actual environment that we are going against for example against our test environment or our production environment um, so it's very easy to paginate um, here you can see also example response and you can see we before we got just an array of our users and now we get uh, an object which has items array where we will get out our users and it has an object metadata um, where it says how many items you're getting how many total items are in your database and how many items on a page how many pages are there and what page are you currently on and then you can see here we have the uh, next links so you can go for the first page you can go to the previous page so the page before page one because now we are on page two we have the next page so page three and the last page page five so you saw here we have total pages five here so another thing that we wanted to do is in our user service we have our methods here and so we said we don't want the user role um, when a user is created to be set by this registering user so he should not be able to make his own role because then he could be as an admin or whatever he wants so we can just go with user role and give him always the user role because we are having here a new user instance or entity and um, we set the role always to user now so that's very basic way and the next thing that we wanted to do is we have our um, update or put endpoint and this is here and we also don't want one user to update his own role so we remove it and the only way to update the role of a user is uh, this method here and this is used in our controller and this is protected for users with the admin role and it has our JWT aufgabe in the roles guard on it so you can look, look this up in the last video and so we should now be fine and look if everything is working so we can run our start script and see if everything is compiling and this looks quite good you can see it's mapping all our routes so let's check our endpoint with the postman and so you can see before we had this endpoint and then we were uh, sending this we were just getting an array of all users so it could be a very large set like 10,000 users or something later in production mode so if you just hit send we now get our item or our object with items so we have here all our users without the password property that we removed so all for your users and you can see here in the metadata that we have total items for item count for we have all our items per page how many pages are there and our current page and you can see here we have our links like we specified with our query parameter here the first and the last one so it's the same page and now we could for example add a query parameter with the question mark and then we can just say we want to limit or to two and you can see we are just getting two users and it says we have item count two on this page on item per page two and so this is something we want to fix because this is now a string and not a number so we can just go in here and we can say this and convert the page to a number and we can do the same with the limit so this should work also now so if we go this again this should not be a string but a number so this is good and so we can just for example use this links here to go to the next page and send and we can later in the front end it's very good 
to do this. So you see there is no next page, but now we have a previous page where we were before, we have our first page, and we have the last page. So let's commit everything. So we can just say git add minus upper a and git commit. And we can say we have now video of five. And what we said, uh, did was um, added paginate endpoint and secured the um, create user and update user with uh, with not with deleting the role property. So we can add this and we're going to push to our branch. So we have to set our upstream branch where we are going against. So we go against origin and against our feature video five. So now it's pushed. So we now can just finish this. merge it back into our develop branch. So you can now see we updated our develop branch and now we are back on, de on develop and we can push this to our um, upstream or to GitLab. So we have pageable, this is done. Um, a user is not able to update his own role, also done and the endpoint create is also always with the um, role user so we can move this to done so i don't so right now i don't know which video is coming first so the next video will either be about setting up angular for this project because now we have some endpoints for the user that we can use and we can make some guards in the front end and add the jwt and make the role permission system a little bit so we can start with this, um, or maybe video about Git, what is actually Git flow that I'm using all the videos here, um, what is GitLab and what is GitHub. So this would be a different video and this would not be specified to this video series, but to another series that I'm starting where I'm making some basic videos about knowing stuff like Git, Git flow, GitLab, GitHub or JavaScript or ERXJS something like this.